Alrighty, welcome to another two team draft. It's a three on three. I've got myself, Kevin Wallace, and Dan the Man battling against Team J Bro, Tom Martell, and Falcon Eye. We're doing something a little different this time. Because it's a six player draft, we're trying out four packs of 12 per person. So slightly more cards and more first picks. That'll be exciting. Also exciting, I opened my boy Telerian Academy. What's really funny about this is in the lead up to the draft, we're chatting and Martel's telling his teammates, all right, the only rule, don't pass Luis an academy. Well, I opened academy, except Tom's passing to me, so he's going to try to cut me. I'm still going to take academy. I don't care. I actually think at this point that a Talarian academy is better than Tinker. But, oh, man, there's a Blightsteel and a Bolus of Citadel in the pack. Oh, that's tough. It really is. The thing is, academy, I feel like it's so easy to just have a busted deck. I'm going to take Talarian academy. I don't care. Uh, I also haven't gotten to play with it for a bit, so... Look, I draft Cube for one reason. Well, that's not true. I draft it for a lot of reasons, but to learn Academy is a big one. Passing Falcon Eye, a Palace Jailer, a Tinker, or Force Negation. All right. Uh, now, we probably still just... We could take Mind Twist. We could also take Sensei's Top. Mind Twist is pretty good, though. And uh, Mind Twist over uh, Pest Infestation is fine. Mind Twist is a good way to use Academy mana, and... I would hope Haywire Might comes back. Sensei's top won't. The five cards being taken, definitely Pest Infestation, almost assuredly Liliana, and uh, probably Duretti. Let's see here. Yeah, I, I gotta take Mind Twist. Even though I think Sensei's top might actually be better for my deck with Academy, I'm still taking Mind Twist. I'll probably take Lotus Petal here over Misha's Bobble Talisman of Unity. There, these are some decent packs for me, and I, I do like Lotus Petal a lot. Also, um, we'll see if, uh, we'll, we'll see. I'm not sure whether Falcon I took Tinker or Palace Jailer, though. My guess is they would take uh, Palace Jailer in general. We'll see. We'll see. Ooh, a little Batter Skull action. I do like Batter Skull. I also do like Days, and I like Noble. These are all pretty solid cards. Mind Twist. I don't really want Unmarked Grave or Chupacabra. I don't really want to snap off Noble. I think I'll just take Batter Skull. I like Batter Skull. It is just like a pretty solid card to cast, and it's good with a lot of mana because you can do stuff like play and equip Batter Skull in the same turn, and it, it has a pretty big effect on the game. Just running people over the giant germ token. Starting like this, looking for cheap artifacts. I've got one mana sink in Mind Twist and kind of a half a mana sink in Batter Skull. So that's like a pretty pretty strong uh, start here. Ooh, there's a memory jar. Oh, Lotus Field. I love Lotus Field. I also like Hard Evidence. These, oh, this is a tough pick. These are all cards I really like. It's going to be Jar, Hard Evidence, or Lotus Field. And I'm kind of leaning towards Lotus Field just because if I get Lotus Field, it makes... Candelabra and other un land untap stuff, just awesome. So I think I will take that, despite the fact that I really do like hard evidence. Let's see, one, two, three, four, six, seven. Now I'm gonna see Una's Prowler Inspiring Vantage, is my guess. Oh, Portal to Phyrexia. If I'd taken the Tinker, I would take Portal. I think I'm just gonna take Pentad Prism, though. Prism is pretty good in this style of deck. And I think if Falcon Eye is more likely to have taken Palace Jailer, we can just cross our fingers. It's good to pass Portal and Mystical Tutor over to Dan. So we'll see. Okay, obviously uh, both the Tinker targets are still here, and I'm just going to take the Black White Talisman. That's totally fine. And we don't have any cards of any color except Mind Twist. I love it. Also, Black White Talisman can help cast Mind Twist, so... That one's uh, pretty much set. Yeah, I, I like where we're at. This is a this is a good start. This is where I want to be. What are we missing here? We're missing payoffs, I guess. Yeah, I mean, unsurprisingly, since his top didn't wield, Duretti's still there. Do I want Duretti or Bitter Reunion? Duretti's a little hard to cast, but you know what? Duretti, I think, is, is pretty decent because it makes artifact tokens. So it can power up Talarian Academy. So I don't mind taking a Duretti here. The fact that I've gotten three cheap artifacts plus Duretti and Batter Skull already makes me feel pretty good. Oh, right, there's another Talisman. All right, well, let's see if uh, let's see if my pick one Academy over over Tinker works out. I mean, no jokes though. My estimation of Tlern Academy has gone through the roof, 
And I don't think it's just me like, oh, oh, you know, doing nonsense. Like, I actually think that Tolarian Academy is just so broken and this iteration of the cube supports it well enough that you can do some good stuff. I guess I'll just take Paradise Lost. I don't know. These cards are all pretty close in terms of like, they all just need some help in order to be good. They're not naturally great. Like, Hex Mage would be good if I picked up Depths. Coma's good if you pick up like Show and Tell or other ways to cheat it into play natural order sometimes and then paradise lost is good if you pick up combo stuff all right oh interesting so I, someone took una's prowler and someone took inspiring vantage i'll take fire ice that's fine i actually got a better card than i expected out of that pack all right pack two disappointing uh do i want polluted delta or time warp i think polluted delta just having a good fixing is great even if i do like time warp a lot i also like uh hex drinker but I don't think that's the pick here. I think it is Polluted Delta and followed up with, oh, Frantic Search, nice. Frantic Search to untap Lotus Field or Tolarian Academy. I'm in over Brainstorm. Okay, no artifacts here. Let's get let's get some artifacts. I'm actually gonna put Duretti down here. Duretti is actually pretty likely to make the cut, especially given that I picked up Polluted Delta, but we'll see. I, I know I'm playing blue it was for Frantic Search, Fire Ice, and also Academy Taps for blue, so it's kind of a natural fit. And I'm going to play Mind Twist in my deck. I don't really foresee uh, a world where I cut Mind Twist. But whether I'm going to cut or play Duretti or the red side of Fire exactly, I don't know. We'll have to kind of see how that works out. Let's see. Um, Helm of Awakening. Oh, Exploration. Exploration Lotus Field is a pretty nice combo. Hallowed Fountain, but I don't have any white cards I want to cast. Don't have the mana for Ulamog yet. I do like Dream Halls, but it kind of conflicts with the Academy deck that wants all colorless. I think I'm actually just going to take the Exploration. Exploration is very good with Lotus Field and good with uh, any draw sevens that I end up picking up. So I'm going to do it this way. Oh, Exploration, get back here. There we go. That's where we want them. Waiting on a couple packs here. Let's see what, what else we can pick up. Okay, so this pack has Show and Tell, has Displacer Kitten, has Channel. Also has a black green land, but I'm not that concerned about that. Don't have anything to show and tell. Don't yet have anything to displace your kitten. So basically, I, I think I'm supposed to take one of these combo cards that I don't yet have ways to use. And I think it's going to be displace your kitten. I haven't used that one in a while. There is also Sylvan Carrotid, but I've got enough talismans that I think I'd rather just... Take the kitten and see if I can pick up ways to abuse it. Uh, Teferi would be one, actually, or Gristic. Any Planeswalker with Displacer Kitten, every time you cast uh, a non-creature spell, you blink the Planeswalker and get to use it again. But I might just take Gitaxian Probe, because that's also a way to a card that works really nicely with Displacer Kitten. Oh, Golos, to go get either of those things. It's also Elvish Reclaimer, but I think I'd rather Golos here. Also, it sets me up for Misha's Workshop, if I can get that. Oh, Duretti's a Planeswalker. All right, maybe, I mean, we're playing green, blue, black, but we could have red too. I like that I have two white talismans. It's setting up balance for me. Let's see if I can if I can pick up a good white card here. I didn't pick up a lot of duels. Oh, Hex Drinker's back? All right, I'll take Hex Drinker if no one else wants it. Savannah, another white duel. <laughs> And I guess I'll take Bonfire. I don't see myself wanting Heartbeat. Even with uh, Frantic Search, I don't really. All right, Spider Bluff Canal is fine. I'll take I'll take a little bit of mana. This deck, I'm not playing Armageddon, and I'm not even going to start Bonfire, so I'm going to take those out. I think Paradise Lost has potential. If I open a Time Walk in Pack 3 or Pack 4, then I might end up getting a Time Walk here. Uh, then I might end up playing Paradise Lost, rather. Uh... I'm not playing either of these. I think I'd least, oh, oh, well, I might play the Grist. That's that's a nice little pickup. Grist is just a strong card. Don't think I care too much for Elder Gargaroth here. I think I, I'd rather not play against Knight of Autumn versus Touch the Spirit Realm, so I just hated that one instead. All right, Vizier, that does nothing. Let's see if we can get a nice little Mox. Hmm. This is why we need four packs, because I just opened garbage. What? This, this pack has no playables. There's not a single card here. Uh, 
horrible. I guess I'm taking like Primeval Titan. Ugh. Horrendous first pick, but honestly, I don't really know what I'm supposed to do. Like, there's just nothing in here for me. I could take Virtue of Persistence, I guess. But I don't really want Enlightened Tutor or Imperial Seal. I just don't like those cards very much. And none of these cards do anything. I, I mean, Virtue of Persistence is early removal plus late interaction. Wow, what a terrible first pick. Um... I could take prime time. I guess prime time is a card I could accelerate out. Sure. All right. Okay, okay. Well, here's a Mox Diamond, an Arkham's Astrolabe, a Fable, and a Seasoned Engineer. So instead, there's like a bunch of good cards. I think I'll just take Mox Diamond. Though Fable uh, Displacer Kitten is pretty busted. Maybe I just do that. Fable is a pretty busted card. All right, I'll, I'll just take Fable then. Seasoned Engineer is also really good, but I like Fable a lot. So I'll do that. Probably followed up with like a Baleful Strix here. I don't really have a good way to use Winter Orb quite yet. Though I guess Winter Orb with either Academy or Lotus Field can be good. I just like Baleful Strix a lot. And now that I picked up Fable and Baleful Strix, Displacer Kitten has gotten a lot stronger. Okay, now I can probably just take a Talisman. Or maybe I just... Uh, Rafine's Tower. Let's see. I can put a Delta for it. I don't have any white still. I have every color but white. Let's just take a Talisman then. Talisman actually does fix my mana. Breeding Pool. Oh, to go get with Pluto Delta. Yeah, perfect. All right. Let's do that. And then last pick in this pack. There's still one more pack, remember. I don't really want Yawgmoth's Bargain. I don't really want Kite Sail Freebooter. Protein Hulk is really not getting there. I think this card needs to go. I guess I'll take the Freebooter, but I don't really see myself playing it. There's just not, maybe it's a sideboard card, I don't know. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cheap artifacts plus Doretti. All right, I'm feeling pretty good about Academy. Would like to, to pick up some more here. Paradise Lost can be out for now. I mean, we're at 21 lands right now, so need to cut, or need to add a, a few more spells, so we have some room. Don't necessarily have to play this Grist either. Could use a little more like having a little busted acceleration would be nice like opening obviously opening like a mox or a soul ring but even getting something like a mana vault or whatever would be ideal um don't see myself playing any of these cards would i play enlightened tutor enlightened tutor is so bad let's just let's just hate a graveyard trespasser also, I can just cut Fire Ice if I want to. I'm probably not going to, but I'm just saying, like, if I had extra slots, Fire Ice is not a must-play. Knight's Whisper could be good, though, uh, honestly, with my mana situation, let's just take Blooming Marsh here. Okay, I'll just take Bayou as well. Bayou's nice. Okay, my mana's looking a lot better now. Let's just hate a Draga Tree Speaker. I don't know. I did pass Falcon I both Palace Jailer and Seasoned Engineer now, so I don't love that. Obviously, Mox Diamond didn't come back. My mana is actually looking pretty good. Um, don't think any, any of these are getting played. Oh, look, it's Protean Hulk. All right. Can we open something good to make up for last pack? No, we really can't. Damn. Um, I guess I could take Comet. Comet is a good card. I, I already have two White Talismans and a Pentad Prism. So that's not so bad. It's that or like Dak Faden. Dak Faden's also pretty good. I mean, I think Comet's a better card. Dak would be a little bit easier to cast. Unfortunately, not really in a position to play Cradle, I don't think. Yeah, I think I would rather Dak Faden here, especially since I don't think Tom is going to have it as easy of a time as of playing Comet. That's not to say that Tom wouldn't be able to put Comet into his deck. You can always just splash or whatever, but... I think I'd rather just take the deck here. Especially since I, I have pretty good fixing for Soltai plus a Spire Bluff Canal and like a red green talisman. I don't have the best white fixing. And I already have Fable of the Mirror Breaker and Duretti that I want to play, so I feel like adding the fifth color isn't really necessary. Plus deck kind of counts like an artifact. You could steal theirs. Alright, well just take a Palantir. Palantir is good. I like it a little more than everything else here. Not a great pack, but what can you do? I mean, this deck, 
I think is doing some good stuff. I would have liked to pick up a draw seven. Oh, there's an upheaval. Upheaval is the kind of card I want. All right. I just don't want one good big mana payoff. And as much as I like Underground Sea, I think I've got to just take Upheaval here. Let's pick three. There's three more picks. I'm not going to get Ballista back. I think Leovold, Ballista, Resto, Underground Sea, and Metamorph are going to be gone. But now... Okay, Blood Tithe Harvester is a cheap artifact, and also it's not the a zero with Displacer Kitten, and I think it's just like kind of a decent card. I'm assuming my mana is going to work out here. Pick four. I could use two more artifacts here. If, I, if my last two cards are artifacts, I'll, I'll feel pretty good about how this all went. But we'll see. Uh, well, Mana Leak is just a great card. I, I, I guess I'm not unhappy about just taking a Mana Leak instead. I do like... Asika's Chariot. Chariot Kitten's also funny, huh? And Asika's Chariot is kind of just a nice card. Is there a chance I should be doing that instead? I have three Talismans. Um, no, I'll just take Mana Leak. Mana Leak is just so good. Oh, Skull Clamp. Skull Clamp goes nicely with Baleful Strix, Blood Tithe Harvester. Oh, Duretti and Grist. Okay, yeah. Yeah, no, this is, uh, that's a great late pickup. Okay. Green Sun Zenith can get Hex Drinker or Primeval Titan. That's it. Urtai can get flickered by Displacer Kitten. So can Manglehorn, funnily enough. There's also a Red Green Land. Oh, Red Green Land that I can get with Titan is kind of nice. Because right now I need to cut a, cut a couple cards here. So let's see what we end up wanting to cut. Um, maybe this Fire Ice is actually getting cut, funnily enough. I'll pass Thalia back. I'll take... There's, I could also take, how crazy is Duretti? Duretti can get back Batterskull or Golos. Would I rather just have Thirst? I guess I'd rather just have Thirst. Yeah, the, no, nothing, nothing good wield. I guess I'll just take Elish Norn. Mm, a little Bomi? Or Lingering Souls to go with uh, Skull Clamp maybe? Lingering Souls I can discard to Dak. Ooh. I love Thraven Inspector, but I think I'm just going to take Sower as a sideboard card. Same with Burst Lightning. All right, let's 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 get this deck built and see how it looks. All righty. Ended up cutting Batter Skull and Blood Tithe Harvester to play 17 lands plus the Lotus Petal and all the Talismans. Have Mind Twist, Upheaval, Primetime, Golos as big payoffs. And I think Kitten's good enough with all these Planeswalkers. Would have loved to see Candelabra of Thanos, but... Did not. All right, battling against J Bro. <laughs> I'm on the draw here. Um, I think I can mulligan this hand. Okay, this hand's a lot better. I'll keep, and I guess oh, it's kind of sad. I think I have to put exploration back. Yeah. If I had a green source, clearly I'd play it. And obviously, if I draw forest now, I'm going to be a little bit unhappy that I didn't take exploration or keep exploration, but. It's the card in my hand that does the least, especially if I wait even two turns to draw green. Like, I can play a turn two exploration off Talisman, but it doesn't really do much. So, I think I'd rather do that. And J-Bro's Utopia Sprawling. Going to tank as to which color to choose. Interesting, interesting. Let's see what they've got. My play is going to be turn one probe. And that's about it. Let's see. I guess I can't really play. I mean, this deck doesn't have a Mox or a Mishra's Workshop, which is kind of unfortunate. Really opening such bad packs, packs three and four, so I missed twice, is where this deck really fell off. Like, I I, I would have liked to uh, open, you know, at least one cheap artifact. What are we, what are we facing? Guys, oh wow, Jabra's Jabra's brewing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what do we got? Sylvan Carrioted and Cradle here, and then Noble was the draw, huh? All right, well I have Fire, so I'm gonna do that. Uh, there's my green source, Fire one and one with a Cradle in play. I can't let Noble just sit there chilling, so. Let's see, this is blue, I imagine, yeah. So, 
I guess Jaybro could just play a land or play City of Traders and cast Echo of Eons. Is that the plan? I would be fine with that. Though it does make me wish I had kept exploration. I just have an exploration of additional land in play, but what can you do? Okay, so now I can do some things. Who do I want to make? A Grist. Do I want to play Grist or Duretti? I'm going to play one of them and make a token. I think. I think it's better to play. I think it's better to play Duretti, actually. The reason I want to play Duretti first is Duretti can only sacrifice artifacts, so now Duretti is ready to go, whereas Grist can sacrifice anything. So Grist is easier to use. It takes less time. Like, for example, if Duretti dies this turn, I could go Grist and sack the Construct still, because this sacks any creature. If I did it the other way around and Grist died, Duretti would have nothing to sack. I, I guess I could sack the Talisman, but still, I believe the point remains. Plus, making artifacts in case I draw Tolarian Academy is also nice. Okay, let's see what j has got. The City of Traders goes away if he plays a land, so that's that's kind of nice. Let's see if uh, what the big finish is. Asika's Chariot. Something along those lines. Next turn, I can go Talisman, other Planeswalker. I could at some point Frantic Search, but I kind of want to slow roll that till I draw either Lotus Field or uh, Tolarian Academy so that I can have a slightly more explosive turn, especially since I already just have decent plays to make this turn. So given that dream halls, okay. Uh, wow. I guess I don't really know what to expect. <laughs> dream halls, a Seeker's Chariot, huh? Okay, the Cradle now taps for more mana. That's true. Let's see what they've got. Island, so the City of Traders goes away. Down to four cards in hand. I guess there's an Echo still, so... We might just be getting Dream Halls echoed. I guess if that's the case, I'm gonna... So this is making Cradle make more mana. Time Twister, I guess I'll cast Frantic Search by discarding Baleful Strix. I don't think there's a reason not to. Untap, discard two cards. Wow, not taking the exploration ended up being pretty bad against all, all these draw sevens. All right, I guess we'll... Shuffle. Ooh, this is nice. Okay. If I can find upheaval, I could still win this game. I mean, it'll depend what jbro has got going with this dream halls, of course. But I've got, I've got outs here. Okay, casting reclaimer. Sure. That's fine. Next turn, I can go Dak and steal the uh, Isika's chariot if I want to. Venser, sure. Gonna bounce a land, gonna bounce a Duretti. Are we casting another uh, Echo of Eons here? Or bouncing a land, all right. Getting time twisted for like the third time, a Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> sure, all right. I don't really see a reason to play Frantic Search now. This is a lot of draw sevens. I didn't see any of these in the draft. This is, j is going hard, okay. Oh, a memory jar too. So j has four draw sevens that we know of because of Echo of Eons as well. Losing uh, Exploration in Academy kind of sucks. On my turn, I can play Fable. Ren and Six, okay. You're doing things, but these don't add up. <laughs> Time Spiral? Another draw seven? All right, I guess I'll cast Fire on the Elvish Reclaimer. Oh, hold on. I should just discard. Fire on Elvish Reclaimer. Done. Discarding a Fable. <laughs> what is this? What is the going on here? Okay, I mean, there's my Exploration and Academy. All right. Elvish Reclaimer's back, I guess. Red and Six pings my token. Then, then that's it? Okay. Um, let's cast Exploration. Make a token. Uh, buy you. Mm, actually, let's 
Disco Academy. Oh, I can't play Talisman into Academy, unfortunately. So let's just cast Fable. And then let's cast Primeval Titan discarding Hex Drinker. Let's get Raging Ravine. And is Lotus Field good? I guess Lotus Field's probably fine, actually. And then sack my two basic lands. And I think that's all I'll do here. I mean, obviously I don't love it, but Jaybro did have a ton of mana and had no plays last turn, so this isn't the worst thing in the world. Next turn I can discard two cards to Fable. I get to attack with Titan. I've got Lotus Field, Academy, Exploration. Let's see if I can uh, hit an Upheaval. Sure, ping my idiot. Nothing? Okay. So this can destroy an artifact or a creature. Draw. Yes. And discard Talisman, Talisman. Talisman, Talisman. All right. Into all garbage. Okay. Um, let's go Lotus Petal. I think I'm going to sacrifice. Um, actually, hold on. Let's tap this for red. Play Talisman. I don't know that we need to even play the Pentad Prism yet. Yeah, I don't. Oh, well, nah, I guess it's probably fine to, to play Pentad Prism here. Because what I can do. Oh, no, I don't want to do it. All right, let's just do it this way. That's fine. Activate Ravine with Academy and then minus one. I'm going to destroy the Asika's Chariot, sacrificing Lotus Petal here. And then I get to attack. And I don't mind the Titan getting traded off here. I'm just going to attack Team Jabro here. Don't care about the Red and Six either. Get my treasure. Get my two lands. Yeah, cracking a fetch for nothing. I think Jabro just draw cast a million draw sevens into into nothing. I don't know. <laughs> Let's see what we're getting here. And that's what it seems like so far. Obviously, you never know. Yeah, we're just Elvish reclaiming for flooded strands out here. Sure. And I guess I get Spire Bluff, Blooming Marsh. Just because these come to play tapped. Okay, block the goblin. If you want to take down Titan, you got a triple block. Oh, we're just going to take 10. Sure. I guess I'll lose my Duretti now. I think that's a, that's actually fine. Cracking a fetch. Hoping to draw a draw seven. One of Jabro's got like 20% of his deck is draw sevens right now. Upkeep, we're, we're thinning. We're thinning like a madman. Because Time Spiral is exiled, but we still know about Wheel of Fortune, Echo of Eon's Memory Jar, Time Twister are all in the deck. There's four of them out of 18 cards. But it's okay. Jabro's just going to draw another land. It's going to be great, I can tell. <laughs> I mean, if I draw Upheaval, I also just win, assuming Jabro doesn't do something busted this turn. This looks like a draw seven, though. Maybe that was a reason to play Pentad Prism. The problem was I would have to use a counter to to play Prism. Like I would play Prism, then use a counter to activate Raging Ravine. Okay, we're going to six. Keeping it at hand is also good for Displacer Kitten. Oh, Lelia. Sure. I'm at 18. All right, Lelia is attacking Doretti, I'm sure. Exile Lorian Revealed. Okay. He's got... White mana, he, or uh, blue mana, he can cast it. Oh, it didn't kill the Duretti. Mm. Uh, didn't, couldn't play Lauren Revealed. All right, I'll take it. Upheaval? No. Nada. Um, I will play my land still. I'll leave the Pentad Prism in hand. I don't need it for mana, so let's see. Blue, blue, hold on. Do I want it? I'm going to use Duretti on the Lelia, so let's just tap this for blue, red, red, green, 
green. <laughs> activate Raging Ravine. Activate Raging Ravine. I got nothing better to do, really. I'm just going to attack J-Bro again. You can't attack with the other thing. Raging Ravines. Double pumping. Let's just thin the deck out some more. Breeding pool. And swamp, sure, why not? I will not like to pay the life. Ravine goes to five, Ravine goes to six. So now Ravine has to get chumped. Titan has to, oh, I could have actually gone for the win. I didn't really count with the extra Raging Ravine damage. Hmm. With Doretti here. Because I was going to like sacrifice to kill Lelia, but I guess it would have been better just to kill a 2-2. Two -two. And hope that that was enough. All right, all well, cracking wood foothills going to one here. Draw. It's not clear what J Road does with all these draw sevens, to be honest. I guess we'll probably find out this turn. I don't really see all of this adding up towards anything. Do you just cast a bunch of draw sevens and then cast an Asika's Chariot and a Lele and a Venser? I mean, that is something. Yeah, I guess it would have worked out better to kill a 2-2. I didn't really think that we were that close to killing J-Bro, but say la vie. <laughs> J-Bro's on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 3, 5. It's a lot of mana, but not enough to, to get me. All right, up a game. Playing against that. That, that, that. Uh, really weird deck. I don't really want to put in Knight of Autumn. Bonfire could be decent playing against uh, Isika's Chariot and a bunch of idiots that go into play. Is it possible that I want to take out a Baleful Strix? Baleful Strix isn't the easiest to cast. All right. I'll try doing that. Let's see how this goes here. On the draw. Let's see. Uh, all right, I will keep this hand. It's got all my colors. I get to play Skull Clamp and then have Mana Leak up and then at some point draw something to Skull Clamp away. That's probably okay. Exploration would actually be a good draw here. J Bros mulliganing. Also, if I draw the bonfire that I cut Baleful Strix for, and I have Skull Clamp Bonfire instead of Skull Clamp Baleful Strix, that would be unfortunate, let's just say. Skull Clamp's mostly there to, to work with the Planeswalkers, which I think it does pretty well. Ketria Triumph Go. Um, let's just go Raging Ravine. The other thing is, I don't have anything to Skull Clamp, and J-Bro has at least Thieving Skydiver and potentially more in terms of ways to blow up or steal artifacts. So I don't really think putting a target out there makes too much sense. Um, let's just fire this thing. I think that's better than leaving out mana leak because it puts Jabra down to less mana. I think I'm gonna play Skull Clamp now. Also, if a draw seven hits, having Skull Clamp in play is a lot better. Oh, wow, attacking, okay. Not using Reclaimer, interesting. Um, what does that mean? I guess I don't know. I'm gonna play Grist, plus one. And, haha, <laughs> milled already, funny. Let's just get Bayou. And I'm going to equip Skull Clamp to my Insecto. Ooh, Displacer Kitten and Fable. Nice. Oh, Factor Fiction. Um, pest Infestation and Forest. Or actually, you know what? Pest Infestation, Echo of Eons. I'd rather have Echo in hand. Echo in hand is weaker, so I'm going to put the best card, Pest Infestation, along with the worst card. Echo, which like you don't actively don't want Echo in hand. And if Jabro wants to take Time Warp City Traders Forest, he can. But I think he's probably going to want to take Pest Infestation to kill the Skull Clamp. It seems a little tough not to. We'll see. This needs three lands, right? Yeah. So not quite going to be big enough if these lands go to the graveyard. 
Can't kill Grist anyway. Without time warp, at least. All right, what do you want to do, J bro? And what is up with this fuff? All right, takes time, time warp forest, city of traders. Okay. Do you have the blue mana for time warp? And if you do, do you want to use it right now? Time warp with uh, dream halls, no matter to draw sevens, is a way to win. That's a that's a definite win condition. So next turn, I'm gonna get to play fable and leave up mana leak. Is my plan? Activate Grist, and then we'll go from there. Seems like a fine place to be. I like Jay Bro's deck though. Green Gaia's Cradle draw sevens. You don't. You know what? I don't think I put Gaia's Cradle and Dream Holes in the same deck, but it actually looks like both fit pretty well in Jay Bro's deck. Dream Holes with fifty million draw sevens and Factor Fiction is pretty cool. So what are we doing now here? Thing is, if you have blue and you cast Time Warp, it doesn't really do anything. All right, are we are we on Delighted Halfling? Go activate Reclaimer. It would appear so. Oh. So the only problem with Mind Twist is that Jabro has Echo of Eons, so that kind of makes me want to just play Fable here. I can counter Time Warp with Mana Leak, something along those lines. Because if I mind twist after Fable and then Jabro has to echo, I'll have a Fable in play. And that seems a lot better. Okay, let's play Island. Let's cast Fable. And then pass the turn. Let's see what you got. Activate Elvish Reclaimer. I mean, I guess Guy's Cradle is kind of the, the thing your J Rose reclaiming for most of the time, though it might actually get blue this time, like a flooded strand or something. That would make sense. I do like having Mind Twist ready. If it wasn't for the Echo, I would for sure just fire off the Mind Twist for four, put J Rose into no cards and, and two elves. But because of the Echo, I think it makes sense to wait and... Technically, if Jabro plays City of Traders, can cast Time Warp, and I can't mana leak it. But I don't think that that's like the natural play. Because if you're going to take a Time Warp, you'd play almost any other land other than City of Traders. Yeah, there's the City of Traders. <laughs> okay. Oh, I guess I have to let Time Warp happen then. I don't really think it makes sense to, to mana leak time warp here because remember this can just tap for colorless all right so we're going to use Elvish reclaimer sacking city of traders all right there's the cradle pass the turn i mean that that time warp wasn't like the most devastating like jbro got to play a land and use Elvish reclaimer this mana leak is fading rapidly though Oh, seven mana? Oh, this is Time Spiral. Okay. Time Spiral with one floating to have tapped six mana, unfortunately. I think I just mana leak here just to make you waste mana. I, I don't really have anything else I can do with my mana. Okay. Time Spiral's gotten mana leaked. Ooh. Okay. I mean, I have a pretty good next turn if Jabro doesn't have uh, a way to restock. Uh, I mean, Jabro's got a million draw sevens. I expect that most of our match is going to be us watching cast Jabro draw seven, and then hopefully at the end of it, not not winning. <laughs> okay, so three seven mana remaining here. City of Traders into Time Warp into land Time Spiral was a little unfortunate given the, the mana leak situation, but. Here we are. All right. We're going to play two idiots and then cast Echo of Eons. Oh, we got the Time Warp. Ooh, that's the card I really am scared of in general here. Uh, attack Grist with the Elvish Reclaimer. Yeah, I'll double block. I mean, I'll lose my, my Goblin token, but I don't really want Grist to take damage, and it makes Cradle a little weaker. That seems fine to me. Don't get too attached to the cards in hand here. I suspect we're we're not getting a, to untap with these cards, these specific set of seven in hand. 
We'll see, though. I mean, Gabriel does have 5, 9, 10, 11, 12 mana. Just do whatever you want. Red and 6, sure. Red and 6, ping your insect token. Deal. Next turn. All right. Do you have another draw 7? Though if you had a draw 7, you wouldn't even necessarily ping the insect token first here. Oh, what is this? Oh, a big pest infestation. Okay, things are getting a little worse. Is that it? Anything else? <laughs> All right. Oh, I do get to take my turn. Let's go get Taxian Probe to see what we're fighting against. Is there a Venser hiding there? These are not the cards I care about. Oh, it feels like there is a Venser here. Venser, Echo Vion, Thieving Skydiver. Yeah. I see. Um, okay, well, if there's a Venser there, obviously I can't just slam a Primeval Titan. Don't care about the Renin 6. If I Mind Twist Jabro for 2, is it kind of obliged to Venser it? And then what? Then I go Talisman Fire. Well, I guess I could just play the Talisman first. Oh, and then I think... Oh, I guess Talisman is going to get eaten by the thing. Uh, this is fine, though. Boom. Um, let's make a token. Yeah, I feel like I, now I am going to lose, because I think Jabro's plan really is to just, like... Cast a bunch of draw sevens until you put a bunch of stuff into play, which is not like the strongest plan in the world. Obviously, like it, it's got some stuff going for it, but I think that uh, we'll see how this goes. Yeah, I guess I guess actually it would be maybe better not to play the talisman. <clears throat> I'm gonna fire some stuff in the middle of combat. Okay, so here comes the Skydiver Stealing Talisman. Mm-hmm. And then... Ridden Six pings the token. And then you cast Echo. Okay, well, in that case, I will fire Noble Hierarch and Thieving Sky... No, actually, Noble Hierarch and Ridden Six, I think. Noble Hierarch, Red and Six. All right. And you can tap Noble for blue, I guess. All right. Let's draw seven cards. Stuff. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, you've got a million mana. I, I, I still, like, it's kind of funny wa watching... Uh, J Pro just <laughs> spin the wheel a bunch over there. The pest tokens are a reasonably fast clock. Another time warp and I'm effectively dead. <laughs> Ren and six is back, sure. I mean time warp's lethal now, right? I take six down to ten and then next turn I get attacked for yeah, ten. So that one is lethal. Without time warp, what am I even doing here? I guess casting Palantir, no, casting Primeval Titan. I'm just kind of hoping that's good enough. Doesn't really seem good enough. I'm really going to need a draw that involves Exploration or Mana Leak or some combination of those in Game 3. I'm assuming I'm going to lose this game. Into Memory Jar, okay. Well, I guess my Grist is going to die and Jabro is going to take another turn, or not take another turn here. I'm going to get a turn here. All right, Grist down, I take two. I mean, I don't really think I do better than just casting a prime time here. That's what I'm gonna do. Um, let's get Lotus Field, Spire Bluff Canal. And I think I actually just sack Academy Island here. 
Since the academy is not doing much for me. Let's see, I'm at 14, so I'm not, I'm not dead straight up here. What did we just do? Oh, is that a memory jar? <laughs> There's my bonfire. Into, fat, into dream halls. Into his. It's going to be pretty hard for you to miss at this point. I think one time warp is enough. Seek his chariot, discarding Oko. Okay, making a 2 2. Yeah, cradle taps for a lot of mana here. 1, 2, 6, 10, 11, 12. Could be even 13 if you crew the chariot first. Time twister, sure. And into nothing. And third path iconoclast. Wow, we're we're going big with uh this cradle. I mean I could still if Jaber doesn't kill me, I could just draw a bonfire here. Obviously, like I don't really think I'm very likely to survive here. Is this Echo Vians or is this Time Warp? Oh, Echo Vians. I mean, this isn't Time Warp yet. Time Warp is what it needs to kill me. And again, he technically could miss on that. Ooh, I can cast Fire Ice now. Actually, I think I can just cast Ice. I can't cast Fire. Okay, there's a Noble. Arbor Elf. <laughs> oh, they're just... Show my teammates what's going on here. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's memory jar. Do, do, do. Cracking jar. Um. So if, yeah, fire. I can't cast. I could ice, but I don't think. Yeah, I guess. Icing the Asika's Chariot. Now, I think you played that this turn. Uh, ice the Skydiver. Seems worth it, I don't know. Drew nothing of note. All right. Jar for the second time this turn? Sure. Dang, there goes my bonfire. My Bon Fuego. All right, we found the time warp. That 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 that'll do it. Oh, do I want like an Armageddon? <laughs> burst lightning. I mean, burst lightning against all the little idiots might be okay. It's possible that Hex Drinker is too slow maybe i just no i like hex drinker you know what i don't think i want burst lightning i think this is fine all right <clears throat> jbro's deck does a lot of a lot of nothing i will say that but it's cool i like that deck i mean you just draw seven draw seven draw seven draw seven eventually time warp with a million tokens and play totally legit strategy um yeah, I think a good mind twist could still be great here. Let's uh, let's just hope for a fast draw. All right, exploration. Come on, exploration. No, but I will keep this hand. Oh man, this hand would have killed for a mox diamond. It's okay. It's okay. Let's just hope Jabra doesn't lead on elf. Okay, that's not an elf. I like that. Mm, just play talisman. And next turn I go Palantir into Academy. And uh, Mind Twist the turn after here. Oh, Mana Leak. Oh, I get to I get to have Mana Leak up here. Because I get to go Palantir and then have Mana Leak up with Academy. And then next turn Mind Twist your hand. That's pretty nice. All right, bottom, top. Jabril's going to take three here. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what we're hoping is no Echo of Eons, is what we're hoping. Because if Jabro doesn't have Echo, then this Mind Twist is just going to be savage. Oh, no plays either. So I guess it doesn't get Jabro's whole hand. Mm, I guess I can probe first. We can process of elimination. Okay, no Echo of Eons. 
So mind twist you for five here. And I'm hoping to leave Jabro with third path iconoclast. Memory jar, fact fiction, thieving skydiver. Sika's chariot is the last card. Uh, not ideal, but if Jabro misses on land, I'll feel pretty good about it. And soon I'm going to start drawing extra cards off Palantir here. Okay. Oh, not, it's not a land. That's not a land. We're just taking one. All right. We've got to be pretty massive favorites now. Let's just draw a spell. <laughs> All right. Palantir. Bottom. Bottom. Jabro. <laughs> All right. Well, Jabro just took 11, so can play a chariot now, but now has to let me draw a Palantir every turn. So I still feel pretty good about this. Unfortunate that upheaval left, but Oh, there's a prime time. We like that. Okay, let's get Raging Ravine and Spire Bluff Canal. Past the turn, and now we get to scry two. Oh, uh, top, top. So now you're going to let me draw Displacer Kitten, and if I get to untap, it's bonfire time. Oh, no, don't have a draw seven. Don't be your last card is draw seven. Oh, my God, it is. Okay. Oh, is it Time Spiral too? Okay, it's Echo of Eons at least. Um, <laughs> didn't leave up Mana Leak. I didn't really think about uh, leaving up Mana Leak here. That's fine though. I don't really want to Mana Leak that anyway. Uh huh? Uh, I'm going to take it. I don't know. Maybe... I guess Jabra has to attack there, but I don't really think getting dismembered is ideal. Oh. Okay. So currently the ravine takes Titan, has to get chumped. You attack with ravine. Let's just mind twist you for six here. Oh, there's Echo of Eons in the graveyard, though. You have to chump with one thing. Um. I don't think I want to attack with the Ravine here. I think I can just attack with the Titan. Let's get these two lands into play. You chump with the Cat Token. Overshore Claimer, sure. And... How much mana do I have? Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 mana. So I could Golos and Mind Twist you for six. Currently, Echo of Eons, let's see. You cast Echo, you have five, six mana, seven. Yeah, I guess it's probably good to Mind Twist. Four, five, six. And then just leave up Mana Leak is my guess. That also lets me... Uh, okay, I hit Time Warp. That's what, that's nice. Let's also just... I don't need to play a Lotus Field here. I'm at 12, so yeah, I can't die from those things. And if I find Fire Ice here, bottom, bottom. I mean, I get to draw a card here. Bottom. Fire Ice just does the trick right away. But also leaving up mana means if Jabro is casting... Oh, there's Fire Ice. <laughs> sure. Uh, I was going to say, if Jabro is casting a bunch of draw sevens, eventually I'll draw Fire Ice. I mean, I drew this off the, the orb. I guess I should have had a stop on my end step. I didn't think I was actually going to draw Fire Ice. I even got luckier than, than needed. All right. Crew, sure. Uh, let's just fire you. And get it over with here. Fire with mana leak up. Though I guess the mana leak actually doesn't doesn't solve anything here. In case you drew Venser, if you cast Venser, you die. Because if you Venser the fire, I just cast it again. All right. Whew. What a round one. Feel lucky to, to escape with that, but uh, we'll take it. And we are one and up. Already time for round two. That was a... Nice little match against Jabro. We definitely stole it. Ooh, I'll keep this hand. 
This hand gets to go turn on probe. I'm going to pay the life because if I hit exploration, that's a big game. Into talisman, into displacer kitten, though hopefully a stop with fable on the way. That would be nice. Falcon and I did in fact take the tinker, which is great because now it meant that I completely cut Falcon and I as best I could. At least two of the four packs. So I guess with four packs, we both kind of cut each other, but I think that's totally fine. And uh, it also meant that my teammate Dan got both the Palace Jailer and Seasoned Engineer, which I think was the better end of the bargain. So yeah, let's lead on probe here. The other thing is if I probe and hit Raging Ravine, I'll be way happier that I paid the life because then turn one tap Ravine fits this curve nicely. If I, if I played Island, cast probe, drew Ravine, it would be pretty bad because then I would have to turn two play Ravine and no Talisman so I can play the turn three Fable. All right, Falcon Eye, what you working with? Uh, balance, Dark Slick Shores, Yawgmoth Will, Island, Hexmage, Brainstorm, okay. I expect we'll see Dark Slick Shores. Oh, we're gonna play the Island, sure. Mm. Oh, Pentad Prism, interesting. Yeah, I actually think I go Pentad Prism here because then I can play Fable on three. I know there's a balance there, but A, Pentad Prism and Talisman are good against balance. Also, the, the Fable itself, like the enchantment, is good against balance. And B, Falcon doesn't even have white mana yet, so. Oh. That's interesting. Um, let's just go Talisman into Fable here. And maybe we get to play a prime time next turn. That would be pretty neat. Is Falcon I thinking of having a counter spell up here? All right. I mean, so be it. If you've got a counter, you will definitely counter this. <laughs> nope. All right. Pass the turn. I have five mana here. So even if the goblin gets dealt with and I don't get the treasure, if I discard a card and find or two cards and find another land, then uh, I'll get to slam Titan next turn. So I like where we're at here. Let's see what Senor Falcon and I can do. Firing off the end of turn brainstorm. Yeah, looks like. So I don't know which of these cards. Falcon Eye still is going to have left in hand, but I'm just going to keep these there to remind me. Presumably Depths is running around if you have got a Hex Mage in your deck, and Artifact Mana and Balance, of course, goes together nicely. My teammate who played Falcon Eye round one said that uh, Yogg will was not the best in Falcon Eye's deck, especially since my teammate has Lotus, so I think that makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. So end of turn brainstorm. Oh, did you find a tutor? That would be something. Let's see what he's up to. So if Falcon is tanking here, I had to answer a teammate's question about J Bro's deck. The answer was yes, he's got a lot of draw sevens. Uh the Yeah, you gotta have a mystical tutor here for this to make sense. Okay, what are we tutoring for? So now Falcon I could easily not have any of these cards in hand. That was a pretty good brainstorm. Hitting mystical off brainstorm is usually pretty nice. But if you didn't have an artifact, you can't really get Tinker. Well, you get Dark Ritual. Okay. I'm excited to see how this works out. Mm, what is this? I got three somethings. Three new player packs. Sure. Thank you. I'll use those. <laughs> I don't know how you use them. Uh, now, Main Phase Imperial Ceiling. Oh. We're setting up the bomb here. All right. Uh, let's see if we can do something to disrupt. Frantic search. Interesting. Mm. Yes, I'll use its ability. I'm definitely going to discard Baleful Strix because it doesn't do anything for me here. I'm kind of trying to discard. Is Displacer Kitten good? I kind of want to discard Prime Time now. Yeah, I actually think I do. Okay, the upheaval is interesting. Let's attack. So I could. Um, three, four, five, six, seven mana. I 
could displace her kitten, cast Frantic Search, but it doesn't really do much. I could also upheaval with no mana floating. I really don't know what Falcon Eye is going to Yogg into because once you've cast Mystical for Dark Ritual, have Yogg in hand almost assuredly, and then Imperial Seal, it just it makes me feel like something really bad's going to happen. But casting Upheaval here doesn't really accomplish anything either. I could also just fire off Frantic Search. I actually kind of like that because if I hit Academy, then I can actually have a good Upheaval. All right, I guess I'll just discard two lands. Sure. Untap these three. Cast Dak Faden. And I guess we'll just see what happens. I'm trying to put more stuff into play that doesn't really get balanced here. Uh, discard Breeding Pool. And I guess at this point... Actually, do I want to discard Lotus Field? I think maybe I discard Lotus Field. And... I think I just discard the, the Kitten and play the Breeding Pool tapped and pass. I'm keeping Upheaval in case I can fire off a nice Upheaval next turn. But I kind of feel like I'm just going to lose here. I don't know. Okay. Oh. We're just setting up Hex Mage Depths. That's fine. Oh, and I drew Academy. Okay. Let me attack with the Goblin Shaman. Generate a treasure. So now I can Academy and just kind of do it all. All right. Uh, do I want to mill myself for two with Dak Faden? Is that good? Because I'm not going to discard either of these cards. But it's free. So I guess it's... I don't really see a reason to mill myself. Do I have much in the way of flashback? I don't really, right? Let me see. Yeah, there's just no... I don't think there's a reason to mill myself then. All right. So let's just not activate Dak. Let's play Academy first. So I won't have a land drop this turn. But... I think that's okay. Let's go upheaval and boom. And you can't hex mage depths in response. You're just going to have to let that happen. And then I'm going to get to replay uh, reflection of Kiki Jiki and, or Fable rather. And I can't replay Dak, but I can play Talisman. Right, because I, I have played my land, unfortunately. Talisman. And Pentad Prism, I think it's worth playing here, even though I have to use one. Basically, I'm playing a Prism for one, because I'm using one counter off it. And I think that's fine. All right. So Academy was really good there. It's not, the game's not over, but this buys me a, a lot of time, because even if Falcon Eye hits a Swamp, at best, you go Swamp, Dark Slick Shores, Dark Depths, Hex Mage. It's still like multiple turns away. And I get to now do some discarding here. Yes, I'll discard Island and Breeding Pool. And then attack with the Goblin Shaman. Which Planeswalker do I want to play? I, I'm guessing Dak is a better play here because it can find more action. Red deck and then maybe I find like a hex drinker or something to start clocking um, forest I guess I'll discard Pluto Delta here and then cast talisman and pass the turn balance also not a big concern here okay island so you are not even seeing a hex mage next turn nice all right, let's stack again. I do need to at some point find a little bit of action here. <laughs> mm, okay. That doesn't really do too much. No, actually, that's not bad. All right, let's cast Skull Clamp. Cast Lotus Petal. 
Oh, I guess I should attack with the Goblin Shaman first. Yeah, this is this is going good. What do I have that wins the game? Because I my Titan's discarded. I guess we'll find out. Tap this for blue, red, black, Dreddy. Oh, I guess if I find Mana Leak, that'd be pretty good. Uh, let's equip Skull Clamp on the Construct here. Do -do. Oh, and Palantir. Yeah, we'll play that. And then I guess play Spire Bluff, sure. Mm, maybe Blue and Marsh, actually. Kind of doesn't matter which one I play, but we'll slam one. And now I think this is probably enough to just deal enough damage to Falcon Eye. Oh, Counterspell? Sure. I don't really care about that. Didn't counter to Ready, but countered Palantir. Okay. I mean, I've just got to keep Mana Leak up to stop Yogwill or maybe to stop Hex Mage. Next turn, I'm going to get a lot of action here. Falcon, I really just not even drawing a second black made things a lot harder. Okay, let's make a 1-1. One, one. Copy the goblin. I have so much mana now. <laughs> I have a lot more mana than I uh, know what to do with. All right. Look, this academy is tapping for 20 mana. All right. Um, let's just tap academy. Skull clamp the token. No reason to deck yet, because I should draw more cards off uh, Academy first. Now I'll deck. Okay, there we go. Land, land, land. And mind twist you for six. Uh, make that eight, sure. Why not? All right, I think we're gonna be up a game here. Did a lot of stuff. Uh, do I want Sower of Temptation or Knight of Autumn or Blood Tithe Harvester? Uh, Kite Sail Freebooter might be better than Baleful Strix in this particular matchup. So Baleful Strix does block Merit Lodge. I, I know so does Kite Sail Freebooter, but... Um, or maybe Sower of Temptation. The Sower doesn't really help that much. Eh, I kind of like where I'm at. Let's fire it off here. See if we can uh, pull off another Academy Upheaval. That was nice. All right. On the draw here. My mouse is losing it. It keeps double clicking. All right. Well, I would like to draw green right away to make this hand real good, but it's still pretty good. Turn one Skull Clamp, turn two Mana Leak, or turn two Baleful Strix, whatever, is pretty nice. All right, let's fire off Blooming Marsh. I will take a Forest, though. Mm, the ready was okay. Okay, but not ideal. I will still take a green source here. It would still be pretty nice. Turn two talisman, sure. Oh, academy, huh? Um, I'm gonna play Baleful Strix. I kind of feel like getting something into play is better. Also, if I find a green source, I can go real hard. Uh, that, I would say, got me a little punished, given that there's a mana leak in hand. The good thing is, if Falcon Eye misses on Citadel here, I can just kill it with Doretti next turn. Oh my god, Brainstorm was the first draw? Oi, oi, oi. All right, I can't really imagine beating Citadel into Brainstorm because you get just to put the two cards you want to cast most back on top. All I needed was Falcon Eye to miss. Not that you miss on Citadel all that easily. Shieldred into Night's Whisper. Okay. Into Hex Mage. Do you have the Depths too? Wow, <laughs> look at you. <laughs> all right. Uh... Yeah, I'm pretty dead here. I even drew the green. I'm just gonna get depths to death. All right, well, that was a beating. Shieldred does make me want Sower a bit, though. Actually, I do have Doretti and Grist that both can kill Shieldred. Maybe I'll just keep it the way it is. All right. Well, I guess not leaving up Mana Leak 
I ended up working out pretty poorly there. I kind of thought I could get something going first. Instead, the only thing I got going was game three. <laughs> All right. I think Hex Drinker's okay still. I think Baleful Strix is fine. All right. Let, have I have enough green, right? I have five plus Lotus Field, but even without Lotus Field, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, I have enough green. I keep drawing Exploration with no green sources, but let's see. All right, on the play, very close to being great, but unfortunately not. <sighs> All right, I guess I'll keep. I'm not looking good, though. I just don't think I can mold a five here, and I think I have to put back Frantic Search. It's kind of painful, but I don't think putting back a mana source. I guess I could see putting back Lotus Petal. The problem is Frantic Search is already minus one cards. So once you have Mulligan and you don't have action, it's pretty bad. And Lotus Petal helps with upheaval. So I think I am going to put back Frantic Search and hope to draw Fable or one of my Planeswalkers. I have a lot of those. Yeah. Looks like Falconized Tanking also, which I guess is nice. What are we hoping for here? Really, Fable is the card I want to draw the most. Okay, I'll keep put back Phoenix Search. I felt kind of kept seven after all that. Oh no. Okay. Also, if I draw Academy with this hand, I, I could have like a relatively fast uh, upheaval, which could be nice. So. Oh, Golos. Okay. Golos is nice. I'm just gonna slam a turn three Golos getting Tolarian Academy and then and then we're on track to, to do a nice little upheavaling. Okay, Falcon I can't have Counterspell up, which is nice. Oh, I drew Fable. Well, I still think Golos is actually a better play here. Please no counter. If you got a counter, you got a counter. Because Golos sets up, Golos Academy means even if Falcon I goes like Tinker play, a bunch of crap, I can still upheaval next turn thanks to Academy. All right, where are you at? There you go. Pass the turn. <laughs> and no plays, leaving Bobble in play, so that means you're gonna tinker this turn, I guess. Okay, don't hit something right away with Citadel. Chromox, sure. You're going to imprint something. Okay. Oh, come on, Falcon Eye. Why oh, you got to do me like this? Narset, okay. Minus Narset. Okay, that's a good sign. That means Falcon Eye had to put back two cards. Bargain? Are you kidding me? Okay. This is going to be really hard to win now. Because Bargain can just clear the top of Citadel. You are running out of life. If you can't find Shieldred, then I mean, okay, shape maybe. Maybe Falcon Eye is going to pass the turn because the Golos is attacking for three and you've got such a good setup. I only have two cards in hand. Maybe I can't do anything. We'll see. Ugh. Come on. Citadel Brainstorm every game. Is it too much to ask for to not have it every game? He says, as he might win still. I still got the, I still got a, a, a shred of a chance here. Obviously, it's sick to have these two cards in play. Bulls of Citadel and Yawgmoth's Bargain. But they both do cost life. Okay, we're passing the turn. Okay, and it doesn't have mana up for Counterspell. Obviously, if he has Force of Will, that I lose, and that's fine. Um... I'm just going to attack the Narset, I think. I think that's better. All right. Yeah, let's cast Upheaval. And hope you don't have a Counterspell. This isn't even like the sickest Upheaval in the world or anything. But that's what I got to do. The Chrome Mox is good against Upheaval. Falcon Eye deciding whether he wants to pay a little life to bargain here first. 
So I guess after upheaval, I just play breeding pool and pass. Is that the idea? I could Lotus Petal out Pentad Prism, but I don't think that even accomplishes anything. Because I can't play... I mean, I guess it would let me play Fable the next turn. Hmm. Days. Uh, okay, I guess I'll pay one. Sure. I guess I can't Lotus Petal out Pentad Prism as it turns out. <laughs> I thought killing Narset was better, so Falcon I can't go land, land Mox Narset, but I don't actually know if it was better than dealing three. It's pretty close. Yeah, killing the Lotus Petal was a little annoying for me. Still would love to see Exploration here. If I had drawn that this turn, it would have been amazing, because then I'd go Breeding Pool, Exploration, Land, next turn, Land, Land, Fable, Prism, whatever. Show my teammates what's up. But yeah, I mean, Falcon are really deciding whether to pay the life here. All right, we're drawing a card off bargain, and then you can see the next card thanks to Citadel. Counterspell is in hand, so so we know that he can't Citadel into Counterspell, but he could Citadel into an instant maybe, like bargain to clear the top, bargain to clear the top, find an instant, play it for free, off Citadel, paying some life. But it'll really depend on how this goes. The thing is, every life you pay now is one less life you have to work with later. All right, I guess we're going pretty hard. Mm -hmm. Hit Chrome Mox into Brainstorm. Because I think Falconize deck is, I mean, Falconize 0-1 right now and is just not a very good Tinker deck, but if you can Tinker Citadel into Brainstorm, that is good. Clearly, leaving up Mana League would have worked out better game too, though, so that was on me for sure. I don't know, this game is de definitely close. I mean, I gotta think Falcon Eye is reasonably ahead, given that he's just drawn a bunch of cards off bargain, but it'll depend. If I could draw Fire Ice, that might be nice. I could steal, steal the game that way. Next turn, I get to go land Prism into maybe Golos again, or maybe Fable, I don't know. It'll kind of depend on how this goes. And we're drawing again. Okay, down to four. Are we trying to find Dark Ritual maybe? Because Dark Ritual is the kind of card that would be pretty effective right here. I would just like to find an exploration. I don't even know, would Talisman actually even be good here? Not a whole lot. Honestly, though, both rounds, I felt that my opponent's deck was capable of doing a lot better things than mine. So being 1-0 and then being in a close game three is, uh, I think, plenty to ask for. All right, well, Bolus's Citadel is basically a dead card at this point. Given that Falcon is at four, it's going to be pretty hard to end up in a spot where Bolus's Citadel does anything. As for Bargain, well, it's closer. I guess hitting Falcon Eye instead of Narset might have been better, but I didn't think... Falcon I was going to bargain a bunch right now because then you're just going to have to discard a bunch to upheaval. Obviously, you get to play Mox and that goes a long way, but I mean, we'll see. Assuming this upheaval does eventually resolve. <laughs> it's not, not clear to me that it does. All right, well, we'll find out momentarily here what other Falcon I is going to pay the devil's due. Oh, people's a cool card. I remember opening this at the Odyssey pre-release and thinking, like, what does this do? Is this good? And then it, like, was obviously very good. So. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, there we go. Falcon, I drew one more, and it resolved. And then I'm going to play a tapped breeding pool and pass the turn. Let's see what you got. Spent a lot of life, a lot of clock. <laughs> you drew a lot of cards. You have 15 cards, no, 18 cards in hand. It's a lot of cards in hand. Gotta have Crow Box. Hopefully don't have Dark Ritual, but I wouldn't be surprised if that were the case. Next turn, I'm just playing Pentad Prism. I don't really have hope for much better of a turn than that, unless I draw the Fabled Exploration. All right, Island. Interesting. I guess Mox can be black. 
but that does make it less likely we're getting Vampire Hex Maged this turn. 17 cards in hand. Let's see what Falcon has got for us here. Get to go Mox, maybe Ritual Shieldred. I mean, that would be a pretty good reset for sure. Kind of hope that's not the case. I kind of feel like we're losing. This draft is close, by the way. Uh, I'm 1 0. Uh, my teammates are both 1 1, so we're 3 and 2 right now. If I win this game, we're 4 and 2, and we're in really good shape. If I lose, we're 3 and 3, and we're going into round 3 where we need to, to win 2 of the 3. So, either way, feeling alright about it. I mean, worst case scenario is we're tied. Best case scenario is we have a pretty big lead. Though, Falcon Eye is uh, certainly. Using using the the if there was an arena rope, let's just say it would have burned down by now. <laughs> and I mean, I get that with Dark Ritual, Chromox, Yogmoss Will is all cards you could have. This is a, a complicated set of turns, for sure. Nevertheless, we'll see what happens. <laughs> all right. Well, I paused it for a bit because it was a. Uh, we, we were taking a while, and, and now the play was to discard Swamp Swamp, Dark Depth Swamp Swamp, Island Night's Whisper, Bargain Citadel. All right, um, sure. Well, I'm just going to play a Pentad Prism, I guess. I don't really have... You know what I would have loved to draw? Mana Leak. Mana Leak would have been a pretty fantastic draw. Oh, we're going to Mystical for Dark Ritual, or Yagwell, whichever one. Tendrils? Uh-oh. That's a different mox, okay. Yeah, it's a chrome mox. Let's see how this works. I I assume I'm dead now. Okay. Dark ritual. So it's three spells, four spells. Five, six, seven. Is this enough? It looks very close to enough. Oh, you haven't played a land yet. Yeah, that's probably enough then. Land. Five spells, six spells, tendrils, seven, eight, nine. Oh, I'm counting nine spells. So, we'll see. Uh, yeah, Misha's Bobble. Because this is six spells. Tendrils is the seventh spell. Um, and you can cast Brainstorm and Daze it, and that gets you up to nine spells. But I'm at 20. I haven't taken damage off of any of my stuff. Falcon has one card in hand, and it's Tendrils. Okay. Uh, unless there's something else going on here, I guess I'm going to take 18. And uh, Falcon and I will have no cards in hand. Shieldred in deck somewhere, unfortunately. The other thing is, though, to make that happen, you have to daze the Brainstorm, which means the brain you don't have enough mana to pay, which means the Brainstorm or Mystical or whatever one mana spell you play is going to get dazed. I would have certainly died if I didn't upheaval. Is Falcon just going to time out here? Okay, you're going to bobble yourself to see what your top card is. Sure. I mean, I guess you could just Brainstorm and then Tendrils me for 16 and try to win from there. Honestly, there's a minute left. It's, all right, we'll see. Here's Brainstorm. I mean, the way we play, Falcon Eye times out, Falcon Eye times out, that is, that is it. All right, here goes Tendrils for 16. Yeah, Mana Lake would have been a good draw. <laughs> all right, well, I'll yield to this turn. Okay, I take 16, I'm at four. Palantir. Um, do I want a Golos? Do I want a Fable? I kind of want a Fable since I already have the Academy. So let's just do that. This leaves me with not only the most mana next turn, but also gives me more looks at something. I'm really hoping Falcon doesn't slam Shieldred. Okay, Shieldred next turn, but not this turn. I can I can live with that. I can live with that. I mean, Falcon, I might not have enough time to win with Shieldred, especially if you're tanking on this Imperial Seal. 
You get to use the clock the way you want to use the clock. <laughs> Not really my concern here. Into Rafine's Tower Pass. All right. Let's draw. Ooh, Fire Ice. Okay. I will use Fable's ability. I'll discard my two lands. And attack with the Goblin Shaman. Draw. Unfortunately, I can't use Ice to stop... Shielded from coming down. I can play Golos though. This is three, four, five. I guess I could play Palantir also. Yeah, that would be good. Oh. No, the problem with Palantir is it forces me to draw. I actually don't like that. So let's just go Golos. Yes. Get Raging Ravine. Pass the turn. Now you cast Shieldred, yep. Um, I guess I want to Ice in response on Mox Diamond. Because I can't cast Ice once Shieldred's in play. Do I care about that? Yeah, because I'll have one, two, three, four, five. I have enough mana to cast uh, to use Golos anyway, so let's Ice the Mox Diamond. Because I need to find Grist or Duretti is my way to kill Shieldred. Okay, draw. Oh, there's Grist. That okay, that should be pretty easy then. Let's go green, black, one, grist. Minus two, I'll sack the re reflection to kill Shieldred. And then boom! We got there. We'll take a little help from the clock, but I also think I was just winning on the merits, so we'll take it. And we're two and oh. Alrighty, time for round three. I'd like to play first, battling against Tom Martell, and this hand has no green mana. I kind of feel like I could just mulligan it into a hand that can cast its spells. Alright, this will do, this will do. I'll keep this, I'll put back a swamp, because my deck doesn't have any double black spells, so it feels like just... Keeping double green and blue is good enough. Okay, turn two, prism, and hope to draw primetime, golos, fable, Tolarian Academy, any of my planeswalkers, you know, spells that do things. Una's Prowler, uh oh. We might be facing some reanimator stuff. All right, well, let's play Displacer Kitten. And I think I'm gonna actually skull clamp here. It's a little unfortunate to use a pentad prism, but I kind of feel like Martel is gonna try to kill the kitten if possible. So let's just go ahead and punish him if he does that. The, the only thing that I really get owned is if I draw Golos or Primeval Titan. I will be kind of unhappy that I used the Pentad Prism counter, but I think getting uh, kitten protection is good. Ooh, we're discarding a gold span into Necromancy. Yeah, you know, it could have been worse. I even take less damage off the Unas Prowler. <laughs> All right, I take five. And can we get a Planeswalker here? No, Spire Bluff Canal. All right, well, this could be... Uh, a short game here since I certainly haven't drawn any action since my opener and I have both Displacer Kitten and Skull Clamp which are engines they don't really do much together and I haven't drawn any of the cards that work with either of them though my Planeswalkers actually work with both which is nice also thanks to Goldspan Tom has effectively infinite mana now to seven mana of any color. Eight if he plays a land, so we can just cast a, a big thing. Goldspan's kind of a nice reanimation target for that reason. Chandra. All right, we're plussing, hitting Frexian Metamorph, which Tom can cast off the two treasures. Wouldn't it be crazy to cast another Goldspan here. Mm hmm. I guess you could also make a Displacer Kitten, but I think the gold span's probably going to do the trick. Mind Twist. Uh, whatever. 
All right. Died badly to reanimator. This kind of makes me want to sow her. I don't know about Graveyard Trespasser, though, because that one's a little harder to cast. I like most of this stuff. Maybe the Kitten. Maybe Hex Drinker is not what I want, because I'm not going to be racing, I don't think. All right, let's just put in the Sower here. And, yeah, I think that's pretty solid. Don't think I want Batter Skull. I didn't play against any aggro decks, so the Batter Skull never really did anything. And I still basically have the plan of just like landing a Golos or Primetime, setting up Mind Twister Upheaval. And that's mostly worked with a bunch of three mana like Planeswalker or Planeswalker esque things. Ooh, Displacer Kitten Sower of Temptation. Is that good? Uh, I guess I could reset the Sower. It's not. It's not not a. It's not like a zero percent of a combo, but it's not particularly good. All right, I'm on the play here. All right, I'm gonna keep this hand. My land situation is like a little suspect here, but we've got we've got action. All right, what are we facing? I'm gonna play Pluto Delta first. Him to Turok. Gr oh, him. Ugh. Grim Monolith Mountain Faithless Legion. Okay, this is. I guess I have Mana Leak if I draw any land here. I did not. All right. Well, I was hoping to play an artifact and then play a Lotus Field later, but I guess I will play our, a Lotus Field now, assuming I don't get my Lotus Field hemmed, which I really would not like to have happen. Okay. Don't discard Lotus Field. I discarded Palantir and Upheaval. Uh, okay. That's fine. That's not the end of the world. Draw. Hmm. Drawing Bayou means that I'm going to go get Island, Bayou, play Baleful Strix, because right now Tom doesn't have a play that I really care to Mana Leak. And then now I can next turn play... Oh, actually, I guess I can't play Grist off this current configuration. Here goes the Faithless Looting in a Mount. Oh, I guess I was supposed to get Breeding Pool, actually. Play Lotus Field next turn as well. <laughs> Drawing like a Talisman would be pretty nice. I wouldn't mind that. Swamp Inferno Titan. Okay, and then Grim. Well, the Mana Leak is not... Up, but sowering the Inferno Titan could be pretty nice. Uh, there's Raging Ravine. Hmm. I think I think we're just gonna say good night to this academy. I don't like doing it, but I think sacking these two is is best. The reason I want to do it like this is I think I'm gonna want to be able to cast Sower next turn. And I, if the Inferno Titan gets reanimated, then I wouldn't have a Baleful Strix in place and my Academy wouldn't have for mana. I'm not sure, though. It'll kind of just depend on what Tom does. He could have just cast Inferno Titan now, actually, is the funny part. Two mana. There's two cards in hand that I don't know about. Okay, there's Necromancy. Getting back Inferno Titan, yeah, you got it. I'll go 14, or no, probably 15, because I think the Baleful Strix is gonna die. And then we're gonna make a Metamorph, okay. So, how do I do this? What do I do? I don't think I have quite enough mana is the problem, because I can Sower one, but then the other one attacks and kills Sower. I can play Grist. I guess I just have to Sower here. It's really not going to work, but... This stops me from literally dying. If I had a few more mana and I could go Sower, play Grist, sack the Titan to kill the Titan, that would be pretty cool. Now I don't really know how I can get out of this, because it's just going to attack. Oh, what is this? A gold span as well? Oh, Turok to get two cards. 
All right, well, I think we're, I think we're going down with the ship here. You know what? This deck overperformed to get two wins. I think that I was a dog in every matchup I played. And uh, the even better news, I got word my teammates won matches, so we were victorious. Boom, we'll take it. Touchdown as I lose my last match. All right, two and one, won the draft. No real complaints here. Didn't end up uh, with the best deck in the world, but it was a real fun one and it worked out pretty nicely. So that'll be it for today. Join me tomorrow for another draft. As always, I appreciate you hanging out with me as I tend to draft to learn Academy. I, I got to get my to learn Academy fix in, you know. Did it today and uh, might do it again tomorrow. Be a new draft up. I'll see you then.